Hey everybody, so sacrificing anodes or sacrificial anodes is the last concept to the redox unit that we need to cover. And uh, well, all this really means is this little statement right here, which is that you're sacrificing one metal, uh, which is the anode in a particular uh, ele electrochemical cell or just a redox reaction, to protect another metal that you don't want to spontaneously react with, with the oxidizing agent. And so uh, the example that I always like to go through is th this one where we have pipelines uh, throughout Alberta and, and across North America that are trying to be laid or are laid in the ground. Now these pipelines are made of iron. Iron is a really good metal that's fairly cheap, very strong, and can, and can uh, uh, obviously transport a lot of, a lot of things, uh, particularly oil. All right. So if we have these oil pipelines that are laid down in the ground, uh, then, you know, this is transporting obviously money from one place to another. And if uh, the problem that we run into though with this is that because these pipelines are made out of iron, if you look just buried in the ground, obviously uh, that iron pipeline is going to be exposed to water over the days and weeks and months and years that it rains, as well as our atmosphere is made out of oxygen. And, and so when you have a water and oxygen present, uh, together, these guys actually make up a fairly decent oxidizing agent. And, and iron, if you look on your data booklet, is a reducing agent. And if you use your right hand, left hand rule, you'll notice that the oxygen or the water and oxygen half reaction, reduction half reaction, uh, them as an oxidizing agent is higher than iron, which is a little bit lower in the table. So that makes for a spontaneous reaction, right? My left finger is above my right finger. And, and this is bad because when, if the iron starts to oxidize, uh, remember that as something is oxidized, it's losing electrons. And so iron is gonna turn into iron two positive ions, which are soluble in water. And then you end up with little holes throughout the pipeline. And holes in the pipeline is a bad thing because then your money starts seeping into the ground and that's not good for business. And so how do they solve this problem? Well, what they do is, you can see I've, I've drawn this in already on this pipeline. You can see that uh, we've got some sort of something wrapped around the pipeline. And this is uh, zinc actually that they take. Now, if you look again in your data booklet on the reduction half reaction table and you find zinc as a reducing agent, you'll notice that zinc is lower on the chart than iron is, which means that if zinc is presented here to this species listed, iron is no longer the strongest reducing agent and so therefore that reaction won't occur. Instead, what the water and the oxygen will do is it will prefer to react with zinc. And so the zinc will be oxidized, leaving the pipe untouched. And so they need to um, rewrap these pipelines every so often and, and uh, replace the zinc that has been oxidized so that eventually the zinc doesn't all go away and then it starts oxidizing the pipeline. So they dig these pipelines up periodically, rewrap them with some zinc wire and then bury them again and, and it protects their pipeline and it's a lot cheaper than just having to replace the entire pipeline every so often because the pipeline itself is being oxidized. So if you take a look over here at what I've done on the other side, you can see the, the uh, two half reactions that I've written down and the full redox reaction that occurs. And obviously you can see that iron is not part of that chemical reaction and so it's protected. Uh, in other words, what we're doing is we're sacrificing zinc in order to protect the iron. And so this is the concept of sacrificial anodes. And there's a variety of types of questions that they'll ask you, um, but essentially it's just the skill of being able to see, okay, where are the reducing agents that are being presented in this particular problem, and which one would be a good, sac a good sacrificial anode to use to protect another metal. You would just need to make sure that you're choosing a metal that's lower on the chart. It's a stronger reducing agent than the one that you're trying to protect, so that the one that you're protecting doesn't uh, react spontaneously with the oxidizing agent that's present. And that's it for this uh, concept, guys.